What is good YouTube and welcome back to a brand new video here on the Madden channel and today we're going to be rebuilding the Cleveland Browns. Before we get in this video though guys if you could go ahead and drop a like and of course subscribe to this YouTube channel if you have not already always greatly appreciate it only takes two seconds of your time as we're trying to grow the community over here on my Madden rebuild channel. But the Cleveland Browns are a team with a very very passionate fan base and you know this season hasn't gone I would say According to plan for Cleveland, they're seven and six and in the middle of a playoff race. So even if they get into the playoffs, obviously that's good enough. But I feel like this team wanted to be better than they, what they were. I know they've struggled with some injuries here and there and all the factors in the NFL season. But uh, I am curious to see what our best lineup does look like to start things off. So our offensive line is great. I knew this team was going to be good going into this just because uh, Cleveland made a lot of good moves and uh, we have a lot of potential to be really good so uh, we have two tight ends we have a full star development offensive line 27 pretty sure all these guys are pretty young if I'm not mistaken why Taylor 26 so I mean it would be huge if uh, we didn't even have to like really make a move JC Treader's 30 so that might be something you have to pay attention to Batonio is 29 okay i mean there are some guys maybe uh on teetering but at least they're not like 38 so we we're probably fine there nick chubb obviously superstar x factor running back backed up by kareem hunt we all know uh they ended up trading odell beckham because of all the drama but you know when it did happen when that trade happened it looked like a very very awesome move and then it's what the defense looks like i mean defense looks good we have hen development uh right outside linebacker and a hen development corner so and then we have three corners uh, with star development, at least star development. So that's good. Jadavion Clowney, Miles Garrett, who's an absolute tank of a monster. And then, of course, like I said, we have a hit development right outside linebacker. So, I mean, this team already looks like it's pretty much set up for success. Uh, what we need to do is just upgrade a little bit positions here and there. Get a maybe wide receiver too and get like a, you know, linebacker core here. And honestly, we're going to be set. So really, we can make three trades here and potentially uh, make it to the Super Bowl. Now, Baker Mayfield is interesting. I'm not sure if I like him going forward. Um, you know, there's I, I would assume there's some people out there that aren't the biggest fan of Baker Mayfield. And then I'm sure some Browns fans would defend him. So we'll kind of have to see what we want to do with him. But for now, let's make some moves to make us a Super Bowl team in season number one. Today's video is brought to you by Prize Picks. Prize Picks is a DFS player props website that allows you to go over or under on players projections. You're facing no one in the world but yourself and the numbers. So let me go ahead and show you a few examples of how it works. So on this example, I went for a flex play on Debo Samuel, Cordell Patterson, LaVisca Chanot, and David Johnson, who were all able to hit or go under the numbers, which led to me getting $170. That's just one example. And here's another example where I didn't actually get everyone correct, but I still didn't walk away with nothing. Aaron Jones was able to hit over his fantasy score. Chase Edmonds got over 10 fantasy points, and Mercedes Lewis got under 18 and a half receiving yards. But unfortunately for me, DeAndre Hopkins did not get a touchdown in this game. If you do decide to sign up, my link is down in the description below. Use code CRUSHABLES. They are offering 100% deposit match up to $100. So the first move we're going to be making is getting Deron Payne from the Washington football team to immediately upgrade the defensive tackle spot because we really needed that. We trade three picks here for Deron Payne, but I think it's worth it as we get an 87 overall defensive tackle up front. I didn't expect the Falcons to accept this, but we just traded... Both our first round picks for Deion Jones and Calvin Ridley. I mean, that gives us a wide receiver and a middle linebacker we desperately, desperately needed. So I'm fine with it. I mean, we needed a middle linebacker. We needed a wide receiver. So now we have Calvin Ridley and Jarvis Landry. And then defensively, we have Deion Jones in the middle. So really all we need to upgrade now is a left outside linebacker and a defensive tackle, which we will probably address those in the offseason. But I mean, if you look at this damn team, uh, I, I definitely just traded a lot of our draft picks. But like I said, I was trying to kind of make us a Super Bowl team like in the middle of the you know first season. We're not in the middle of it, but we're you know what I mean. We're trying to make a Super Bowl team immediately. So were those moves good enough to do that? Uh, we got a good wide receiver and Jarvis Landry out here as well, um, which he's good. I don't know why I separated good and Jarvis Landry together. I'm not sure why I did that, but uh, we have pretty much everything we need other than left outside and defensive tackle, which we'll address those in the off season because I don't want to trade any more draft picks than I already have. But I feel like those were well worth it. Now we can go ahead and sim to the midseason mark, see how we're doing, and then resign our guys and then sim to the playoffs where we should definitely, definitely be 
in the playoffs. And actually, as I'm recording this, unfortunately, Baker has tested positive for the you know what. So that's unfortunate. But upgrading players, let's go ahead and upgrade all of our guys because obviously we are at the midseason mark and we are six in one. Absolutely succeeding. We are thriving out here. Absolute W. And of course, now we need to negotiate with some guys. They're six and one. We got to keep this core intact. I'm going to assume, yeah, I was about to say, I'm going to assume I have quite a bit of guys to negotiate with. And actually, this year, there's not too many guys. So, uh, obviously, Jadavion Clowney is interesting. He's 28 years old, but we'll probably keep him. Uh, we do have Austin Hooper. I'm going to go ahead and probably keep, uh, I'm going to keep my punter. And then we have a defensive tackle, star development. Malik, did he? I don't, I don't remember if, uh, you know what? He's a star development 25 year old. Yeah, we'll go ahead and uh, sign you. Uh, salary is great. It doesn't look like we have a ton of cap space though, which makes sense because we've made a lot of crazy moves. So I'm not really sure how much I'm gonna be able to. Uh, Ronnie Harrison Jr. Hopefully he's willing to accept a little bit of a. Uh, boom, we got him. Okay, and then David Njoku. Uh, let's see. We may we may not resign David Njoku just because we already have a tight end. Davion Clowney is gonna cost me a 10 million dollar cap hit. I don't know if I can do that to be honest. And then uh, the punter. I do want to go ahead and resign the defensive tackle as well. Malik McDowell, is he the one that was starting? I don't think he was starting. I think we had someone else starting there. Um, the punter, I guess, you know, it's kind of important to keep your punter around. It's only $2 million cap hit. Uh, so we'll sign him. That's fun. And then uh, I think we might have to trade Jadavion Clowney here because we don't have a ton of cap space. And I don't want to just lose him for nothing. And I don't want to obviously, like, use all my cap space on him. So we could either, I guess we could use it all on him or we can just trade him here to make things easier. We'll, we'll see what's easier. So the trade we are making at the trade deadline in order to kind of avoid having to resign Jadavion Clowney, we're going to be getting Eric Armstead and Kinlaw, which is going to be also an upgraded defensive tackle spot, which uh, Kinlaw might need to be resigned as, or uh, Eric Armstead might need to be resigned as well. But, you know, we'll, we'll figure that out in the offseason. So we're going to go ahead and cut our left outside linebacker that we don't need. Uh, but we were able to trade Jadavion Clowney and avoid having to pay him a lot of money, I guess. So... Uh, you know, feel decent about it, I guess. David Njoku, I kind of want to bring him back. His cap hit would be 550k, and we don't have... Yeah, we don't have money for that. So, uh, hopefully, Malik McDowell we can get back, but it doesn't look like it. We're, we're probably going to have to lose David Njoku. We'll see. But I'm going to go ahead and keep simulating. The team looks a little different now with Jadavion Clowney gone. But I feel like we got better depth-wise. Uh, we'll see what happens. Simulating to the playoffs. And hopefully, this team can obviously keep it churning and keep going. So just like that, this team went 13-4. and 4, 88 overall. I mean, I'm not surprised. This team is built pretty good. So uh, I'm glad that we were able to do what we did. 28 players were upgraded. And now we can go ahead and see a look at what some of our uh, hidden development players look like now. Let's see if one of them got like superstar or something crazy. Probably not, but it would be cool. Uh, so we got uh, offensive line going up and overall W. Nick Chubb's at 99, Kareem Hunt's at 89, Calvin Ridley's in 88, and then defensively uh, we have a uh, 85 overall right outside linebacker W. Eric Armstead, and then this is our defensive line. So uh, Malik McDowell was the one I think actually starting, wasn't he? So yeah, he got star development. Uh, went from normal to star W. We still don't really have a left outside linebacker, which we'll try to address that. And then looks like Greg Newsom is a star development corner. Greedy Williams. So we have three corners. Really the only thing, like I said, that's kind of a gaping hole is the left outside linebacker, which uh, if we're able to, we will address. And then uh, I guess I do want to kind of see how Baker Mayfield did uh, in the regular season. See if he's worth keeping around or not. Don't really know how he performs in Madden. I mean, he went 13 and four, so I'm assuming he did okay. 26 touchdowns, eight interceptions. I mean, I'm sure Baker Mayfield was more of a, less a game manager for this Cleveland team because this team loves to run the football. So rushing wise, Nick Chubb with 2,000 yards, 21 touchdowns. Man went off. Holy moly. Okay. Okay. Receiving wise, Calvin Ridley, 100. Yeah, like I said, I think we were more run the ball type team, which is Cleveland, which is what Cleveland is in real life. Uh, Calvin Ridley with 900 yards, Jarvis Landry with 800, Sean Higgins with 500, and then um, these guys down here had some production as well. So, W. And then defensively, sacks-wise, let's go ahead and see if there was anyone killing it. Miles Garrett, of, uh, obviously, it's one and a half. Deron Payne, we brought him in, eight and a half sacks, interceptions, six from Denzel Ward. Okay, W. Did we get any, like, uh, defensive touchdowns this year? No defensive touchdowns, no safeties. Um, do we get a block kick? We did get one block kick. Okay, we'll take that. And then that was pretty much it. All right, well, here we go. We are in the playoffs. Uh, we are playing in the wild card, it looks like, I think. We are. So 
we went 13 and four. We weren't the best team in the AFC. That's why we don't have a buy. I forgot about that. So um, just because you win your division doesn't mean you get a buy. I don't know why I was thinking that. So um, let's go ahead and just simulate the next week. Can we beat the seven and eight or nine and eight Houston Texans or Texans? We should not lose to them. Let's see. Come on. And we lost 30 to 28. Wow. Okay. The Texans of all teams upset us. That is not ideal at all, um, but it is what it is. That's what happened. So we unfortunately lost our first round playoffs. That's not good. We have literally no cap space, which makes sense. Uh, so that's disappointing for a team that obviously, wow. Okay. Did not expect that, but here we go. Let's get to the off season now where we have a pretty important off season, I guess, more or less. So we don't have a ton of cap space though. So I'm not really sure how we upgrade this team. Um, upgrading players. Let's see. We got our right outside linebacker going up even more in overall. And then uh, let's go ahead and look at the 21 season recap. Nick Chubb better win offensive player of the year. He didn't. 2,000 yards. Russell Wilson won it. Okay. And then the Cowboys uh, beat the Chiefs in the Super Bowl. We did get defensive rookie of the year. And Jeremiah Owosu Karamo, I think is how you say it. But I could be wrong. All right. Well, huge offseason, even though we have no money. So I'm not really sure how this is going to work. But um, we'll, we'll figure it out. We'll see what we can do. So going into this season, we have one player ready to negotiate, and I don't think I can even resign him. So David Njoku, I want Malik McDowell. Salary and length could be better. Yeah, I don't think I can get him back. So we're going to lose all these people right here, unfortunate, but we're not going to get David Njoku back, which we don't necessarily need anyway. So yeah, we're not going to be able to sign any of these guys, unfortunately. That's just how it is. So going into free agency, we're going to have no money at all to sign anyone. We don't even have first round picks. So basically... We're stuck with the team, unless if I get pretty creative, which I think is going to be pretty tough to do. Uh, but we might be able to get a little creative, maybe. We'll see. Negative $4 million in cow space going into this free agency. Uh, not going to be able to resign anyone, obviously, or sign anyone. Imagine we brought in Odell. You know, that sounds like it'd be lit, but it never was. Okay. Well, maybe the trade market is where I'm going to have to strike. If I can't make a single trade, then we'll just have to run with what we have. So the one trade we are going to be making, it looks like to upgrade this team just a little bit further is going to be trading Kareem Hunt away. We don't necessarily need him and he's going to be free agent next off season where I probably won't be able to afford him anyway. And we get a left outside linebacker who doesn't have star development. He has superstar development. And we also get a second round pick. So a second round pick as well. And now we have a new lineup and we have two, not franchise staff. I didn't mean to click this. All right, I've never actually messed with that. I'll have to kind of look how that works next uh, next time or see what, what that's all about. But let's go ahead and look at our team now. So if we go ahead, this is why I made this trade, by the way. So obviously, we had Nick Chubb. We didn't really need Kareem Hunt necessarily. But defensively, now we have two superstar running backs. And we have a superstar corner, a superstar X-Factor right in, obviously. Now, it's a huge upgrade. Huge upgrade. We also have a superstar right guard and a superstar X Factor running back. We're not gonna be able to do anything with Baker Mayfield. This is the team we're stuck with. So it is what it is, but I'm pretty happy with it. Uh, Aziz Ojalari, welcome to the team. We're going into the next season with our head held high. Not a ton we could have done this off season, but it looks like we made the one move that I think was definitely needed. So I feel pretty decent about that. Let's go to the draft where we actually have a second round pick now to make some kind of selection. Hopefully we can get lucky and grab like a hidden development, whatever it may be. I don't even know what we're going to go for, but let's try to get something. So to be honest, it really doesn't matter who we grab in this draft. Uh, we pretty much have a position everywhere, but I feel like we should probably just try to obviously take best available here, whatever that may be. Uh, so maybe we take a back of running back because running backs are usually pretty good. And I, I don't know, man. It really doesn't matter what we grab. Let's go ahead and see what this running back looks like. Uh, Brian Cunningham, his uh, skills are all hidden. He's got B medium route, B juke move, B spin move, D injury. Okay, not ideal. Brian Cunningham is available here. What else can we do? Tight end. We don't need a tight end. Uh, wide receiver left in, free safety. I was going to take the running back since we traded Kareem Hunt, I guess, and hope that's good. And uh, he's normal development. So, you know, an L, but it was worth a shot. So, Brian Cunningham, welcome to Cleveland, but that was it. That was pretty much our only draft pick that we need to worry about. So, all right, welcome in Brian Cunningham. So this is what the final product looks like. Um, Baker Mayfield, Nick Chubb, and we actually drafted a decent running back. Uh, he has normal development, but I feel like that could easily go up. Um, so we might be able to trade him maybe if we need to, if we keep going in this video, who knows? Uh, defensively, we have this going. So 
everything looks great. I think we are in position to make another playoff run. We shouldn't be losing the first round like last time. Hopefully that doesn't happen. But here we go. Let's go ahead and submit the playoffs and see if this team can make it again. And this time actually try to make it to the Super Bowl and not get eliminated by a team like the Houston Texans. So at the end of the season, the AFC North was pretty hefty. 12 and 5, 12 and 5, 13 and 4. So this team, I mean, the division was insane. We get to play the Jacksonville Jaguars. Um, this is our window of opportunity, by the way, because I can't even resign everybody. <laughs> I might lose Baker Mayfield. I might lose uh, Jarvis Landry. I might lose. There's a lot of guys I had to resign, and I can't resign them because you know why? My team is too good, and uh, there's a ton of cast space I don't have to resign everybody. So this is pretty much now or never. If we don't make it here, it's going to be pretty much impossible to um, win uh, in this game uh, and win in this rebuild. So hopefully we can take advantage of that so all right well let's go ahead and take a look at the stats real quick before we go ahead and hopefully not lose to the jacksonville jaguars St stats in awards it is at jacksonville 32 touchdowns and four interceptions for baker mayfield so we had a pretty damn good year rushing wise nick chubb once again 1800 yards cunningham with uh 257 i wonder if he went up to no he's still normal dev okay and then receiving wise calvin ridley with a thousand yards Jarvis Andrew with 900 yards and then defensively uh sacks wise we had uh miles garrett with nine eric armstead with nine four and a half and then interceptions seven from ronnie harrison jr which is funny because i thought about trading him but i didn't so uh kind of showing me that he shouldn't be traded and then touchdowns we only had one and that was denzel ward who may have gotten a pick six or a scoop fumble whatever it was all right please madden i'm begging you i cannot go further in this video because this team is going to get a lot worse 91 overall to their 81 overall we don't lose this go to next week can we please, please beat Jacksonville Jaguars? And just like that, we're in the divisional round. Now we get to play the Kansas City Chiefs, which is going to be tough, but at least we won. At least we won our first round matchup and didn't get eliminated in the first round. I have to feel decent about that uh, because I would have hated to end this video off with just a loss in the first round. We won 26 to 20. We have a playoff blizzard coming in. So let's go ahead and discuss about this because this might give us a little bit of uh, awareness or whatever. It might give us an advantage. All right, fellas. As I'm sure you're all aware, the forecast calling for blizzard-like conditions out there. This week was so... So like that is a great equalizer, and the Chiefs are a dangerous team even in regular circumstances. Yes, they are, JC Treader. C incredible insight. All right, what do we have to say next? Surf is going to be slow. The footing is going to be rough, and we're going to have to play fundamentally sound football all around to win this game. Okay. Players for both teams have trouble accelerating. What? That didn't do anything for me. That just made me worse. Business as usual. Beat the Chiefs. All right, baby. Can we get to the AFC Championship? Is our run going to come to an end? Same way to the next week. Come on. Come on. And we beat them 24 to 21. We are in the AFC Championship. Let's freaking go. That is what I'm talking about. We're going to upgrade the players once again. We got uh, nobody crazy. I guess Javon Kinlaw is going to be up to an 80 overall now. So that's huge. All right, man. AFC Championship against the Baltimore Ravens. It's a division rival who had a 12-5 and record just like us. So um, let's go ahead and talk about this again because this kind of worked last time in our favor. I'm going to go ahead and skip it, though. I don't want to, uh, you know, read the whole thing. Uh, I'll never forget this weekend. So glad I would remember it as a victory. Burr. Your entire team has earned 2,500 XP. You've earned five staff points. Okay. That mean we got some upgrades now? No, we do not. Okay. Well, here we go. Can we... We get to the Super Bowl. We got to beat Baltimore to do it. Here we go. Super Bowl bound? Yes, we're in the Super Bowl. Playing the Dallas Cowboys again. Of course, it's the Dallas Cowboys. Why wouldn't it be? All right. We are in the Super Bowl. Let's freaking go. We can upgrade all these guys now. Once again, back-to-back -back Super Bowls, baby. We were in the Super Bowl in the Raiders video. And now we're in the Super Bowl in this video. So we have to feel great about that. All right. Once again, we're gonna what you know we're gonna sit back and watch this Super Bowl. Last time it was pretty insane, so hopefully this time uh, we can go ahead and prevail again. It's in Arizona. All we have to do is win, and we are champions. On the Super Bowl, Nick Chubb has a 10-yard rush to start things off, and we get a three-yard rush first down, and then we get a 19-yard reception from Calvin Ridley. So first play of the game, we're kind of driving Baker Mayfield, incomplete pass, but then throws a 21-yard dime to Austin Hooper. Okay. First and 10, incomplete pass. And then we get a six-yard rush from Nick Chubb. And then we get a pass knocked away by Trayvon Diggs. Absolute, absolute beast of a corner, by the way. 
and we went for a 32 yard field goal so at least we got some points on our first drive of the game now to the dallas cowboys they get the ball and incomplete pass to Dak. good first start ar rush by zeke can we get them three and out on the first drive of the super bowl for them and a negative three yard rush just like that the dallas cowboys will be punting to us so let's go ahead and see if we can put up a super bowl wait what what just happened Dak prescott wait we just had the ball right I thought they just punted to us. Am I tripping? I don't even. I guess I'm tripping. Whatever. Uh, seven yard rush by Nick Chubb. Unless we like just turned it over and didn't show that. Whatever. Uh, six yard reception with Calvin Ridley. We need to keep driving if we're going to give up points like that. I'm not really sure what just happened. But we are driving down the field. At least guaranteed a. Okay, Donovan People Jones with a 26 yard reception. And just like that, Baker Mayfield to him again for a seven yard touchdown. So now we're up 10 to seven. Okay. Dallas is driving seven yard rush. And then. Incomplete pass to Dak. He gets a first down, though, with Ezekiel Elliott. And then he gets a 10-yard rush. All right, they're kind of driving down the field. Seven-yard rush. Eight-yard reception from CeeDee Lamb. All right. And then penalty against the offense. I think this is third and 20 now. No. Negative three-yard rush. And they settle for a field goal. So just like that, it is a 10-10 to -10 game. Okay. It is a back-and-forth affair so far. Nick Chubb is starting to kill it on the ground a little bit we're going to him reception for Jarvis Landry I think that was his first catch of the game I've seen uh incomplete pass to Baker and then it looks like we went three and out Trayvon Diggs once again and it looks like we have punted to the Dallas Cowboys which is not ideal all right it looks like we might have got them 28 reception never mind okay it looks like they're about to drive and score um and they get a touchdown okay well here we go Let's see if we can answer that touchdown. And we did. So just like that is a tie ball game. But Dallas is driving and about to score before the half. They put up a touchdown for halftime. Not ideal. We're going into half. We get the ball and then we punt it. It looks or no, this kickoff. Never mind. Okay. So if Dallas scores here, all right. If we didn't allow a score, that's good. We're driving. We could tie it up here. And we did. Just like that is a 24 to 24 ball game. All right. And Dallas is driving once again. They're going to put up another touchdown. We need to answer immediately. And we punted, I think. And we did. Okay. Dallas, are they going to score? If they score, it might be it. Okay, they did. We did answer back. It's not over yet. 31-34. They scored again. And it doesn't look like we're going to be hoisting up another trophy, man. Dallas is going to beat us in the Super Bowl. That's unfortunate. I feel like the Dallas Cowboys are the Pelicans. Of Madden you know how the Pelicans are overpowered in 2k I feel like that's what Dallas is and I can't sit here and watch this I'm sorry congrats but that's unfortunate thank you guys for watching definitely leave it a life you enjoyed it at least we got to the Super Bowl I guess we had to feel decent about that but it sucks we lost once again to the Dallas Cowboys but thank you guys for watching this is Crushables I'm saying peace thank you guys so much for watching make sure you click here to watch another video that I know you'll love